Morning. Morning. Welcome to Divine Peace. It is the seventh Sunday of Easter. It's also be the last Sunday of Easter. Next Sunday will be Sunday of Pentecost. So we'll change all the church colors to red. Uh, the Bible reading will be when the little tongues of fire appeared over the disciples' heads, which is why we have red. That's usually the color that we use uh, for the Holy Spirit. We also use it uh, at the season of end times, which again, think of the Holy Spirit's work to gather the church and to establish the church. So everything is printed for you in your worship folder. Uh, if at any time during the service you need to use the restroom, feel free to get up. You can walk down the side aisle, go through these doors, continue walking. There are two restrooms. One does have a uh, changing table if you have that need. Uh, for uh, anybody that needs a nursery, the nursery is also in the back. There's a changing table there and plenty of privacy uh, for moms and children. The sermon for today will be based on our Old Testament reading from Acts chapter 16, and it has the theme, Help Us. Worship will begin on page 3, and we will join to sing the opening hymn, hymn 256, How Great Thou Art. Thank you. 
I invite those who are able to stand. The service will continue at the top of page four. O Lord, open my lips. Hasten to save me, O God. Praise be to God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us worship Him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you in our thoughts, in our words, in our deeds, and in all that we have not done. Forgive us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Deliver and restore us that we may live in peace. Jesus says to his people, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. His death paid for the guilt of your sins and the sins of the whole world. Therefore, at the command of our Lord Jesus Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God Himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. Peace be with you. Amen. It's time for prayer, so reminder especially to the kids to stop what you're doing, drop your heads, and fold your hands. Almighty God, your Son, our Savior, was taken up in glory and intercedes for us at your right hand. Through your living and abiding word, give us hearts to know him and faith to follow where he has gone. For Jesus rose from the dead, ascended, and rules all things with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading is recorded in Acts chapter 16. Again, this will serve as the sermon text for this morning. The sermon has the theme, Help Us. Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. When they came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. So they passed by Mysia and went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, Come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. This is the word of the Lord. Psalm, the day is Psalm 8. We will read it responsibly. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. What is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? You made him a little lower than the heavenly beings, and crowned him with glory and honor. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. New Testament reading is recorded in Romans chapter 15. Paul rejoices, and he gets to share the gospel of Christ. I myself am convinced, my brothers and sisters, that you yourselves are full of goodness, filled with knowledge, and competent to instruct one another. Yet I have written to you quite boldly on some points to remind you of them again, because of the grace God has given me, 
to be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles. He gave me the priestly duty of proclaiming the gospel of God so that the Gentiles might become an offering acceptable to God, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, I glory in Christ Jesus in my service to God. I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me in leading the Gentiles to obey God by what I have said and done, by the power of signs and wonders, through the power of the Spirit of God. So from Jerusalem all the way around to Elycrium, I have fully proclaimed the gospel of Christ. It has always been my ambition to preach the gospel where Christ was not known, so that I would not be building on someone else's foundation. This is the word of the Lord. Now the next song of praise is, O Church, Arise. Keep in mind verse 14 from Romans 15. Paul writes, I am convinced, my brothers and sisters, that you yourselves, so you, believers, that's you and me included, you yourselves are full of goodness, filled with knowledge, and competent to instruct one another. So we will join to sing, O church, arise, him is us, the church, God's people, rising to follow that command of Jesus to instruct one another in the gospel.
invite those who are able to stand for the gospel reading. This morning's gospel is recorded in John chapter 17. Here Jesus prays for all believers. My prayer is not for them alone. The them is referring back to the disciples. The section just before this, he specifically prays for his disciples. Then he moves on. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you may be seated. Again, Jesus prayed for us, for all believers. The sermon for today, the theme is Help Us from Acts. Notice stanza three in the next hymn, stanza three, my advocate, my defense, in other words, my helpers. We cry out to Jesus as our helper. He is our great high priest. And so we'll join together to sing hymn 359, Jesus, my great high priest. Sermon or the service will continue with the sermon. Again, the sermon is based on our Old Testament reading from Acts chapter 16, verses 6 through 10. So you can follow along at home uh, by looking that up. Or if you are here, you can follow along in your worship folder. And we will begin with this prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. 
Amen. Help us. Help us. This weekend, we give thanks for all of those that heard that call. Help us protect and preserve this country, its people, and its freedoms. We all pause to give thanks and to celebrate those who paid the ultimate price, those who sacrificed their lives to keep us free and protected. Help us. Those few words, no doubt, were also cried by the 19 people that died in Uvalde. Help us. Those words are powerful. The words are powerful. They have the power to evoke deep emotions inside of us, even tears. As we hear things like Memorial Day, and we think of those that sacrificed their lives, as we hear about the people in Uvalde, the people in Buffalo, the many people in Ukraine, and the many other tragedies worldwide, national, in our communities, in our own lives. Help us, those words are powerful. Those words also express that somebody has realized that they are powerless in a situation. That whatever situation that they are caught in, they need an outside source to come in. Otherwise, they'll be lost to whatever tragic, terrible situation they're in. They'll suffer the consequences. Help us, those words are powerful because it reaches outside of someone and hopes that someone will hear, someone who has the ability to come, to rescue, to deliver, to save, to counsel, whatever the situation is. But oftentimes, the person who is crying out, help us, doesn't have the clarity of mind to even know what kind of help they need, doesn't have the clarity of mind to pause and ask for the specific person that can help them. The best case scenario for someone in a situation crying out, help us, is that the right person who is equipped with the power, the ability, the training, and the willingness to respond will hear their call and respond to help. In our Old Testament reading from Acts 16, God allowed Paul to have a vision of somebody asking for help. Paul was traveling around from town to town with other missionaries, helping people. And we read in Acts 16, during the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him Come over to Macedonia and help us. When Paul awoke, he knew he had to go to Macedonia to help those people. People of Macedonia, if you want to picture it today, if you hopefully can picture Greece on the Mediterranean, Macedonia is that country just to the north. Paul did not know the specific situations that the people were crying out, help us. But it didn't stop him. It did not stop Paul because he recognized there is a universal need of all people. All of us cry out for help because of sin. Sin is what causes all people to cry out, help us. The problem is most people don't realize it is sin that causes them to cry out, help us. Jesus, though, makes it very clear that sin is that reason that all people cry out, help us. We hear in Mark chapter 7, Jesus gives a list of what sin causes in our own hearts, of what sin then makes us do to each other. It becomes very clear, sin is what makes us cry out, help us. In Mark 7, Jesus said, For it is from within, out of a person's heart, that evil thoughts come. Sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside 
and defile a person. This list of evil, which certainly could go on, is all the result of sin, sin that lives in each one of our hearts. From our own hearts, this evil comes and it harms one another. And the world is broken because of this sin. This causes people to cry out for help, but so often, people's cries for help are not clear. Rarely will a person actually use the words, help us, because I am suffering from sin. It has caused X or Y situation. Often you don't hear that. Instead, we often hear toddlers screaming incoherently. But prayerfully, as parents, we recognize they're asking for help. We have teenagers that rebel that say they hate their parents, that choose alternative or odd lifestyles. We recognize they're crying for help. Or you have adults. Adults that scream and yell at their TVs when they're watching the news. Adults that post all kinds of controversial or share all kinds of controversial things on social media. Or you have adults that get obsessed and stressed and anxious about their jobs. Or you have adults that pour themselves into entertainment hoping to escape the reality of our lives in some fantasy world. Or fill in the blank. Fill in the blank for yourselves with some other thing. Those are cries for help. And even this. When someone is brought to the point where they commit a terrible act of violence. Or when somebody goes, why continue to pray? The world is still a mess and God does nothing about it. Those are also cries for help. Sin causes us to cry out for help because it has severely, universally, and personally hurt all of us. So we as individuals and we as humanity cry out for help, and we need that help to come outside of us. Outside of us as individuals, outside of us as the whole world's humanity working together, it must come outside of us. It must come from someone not affected by sin and evil. God, God is that one that is outside of us. God is that one who came to help us. In our gospel reading from John 17, Jesus prayed the night before he was crucified. My prayer is not for the disciples alone. I pray also for those who will believe. Through their message that all of them may be one father, just as you are in me and I am in you. Jesus prayed for his disciples. Jesus prayed for all believers. Jesus himself prayed for you. Jesus himself prayed for you. It is sad that so many have denounced prayer as being something that is powerful or effective or something that is heard by a being who can actually help us. It's sad because so many are crying out for help. And God is the one that can answer. Jesus continued to pray, Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Jesus prayed that you would be with him in heaven. Jesus prayed that you would be with him in heaven. He knew that the way for you to be with him in heaven was to save you from your sins. Jesus was not helpless in the fight to save you from your sins. Jesus was not helpless as he was arrested as he was beaten, as he was falsely accused, and he was put to death on the cross. He was not helpless. Instead, Jesus actually shows the highest level of power 
as he went to save you and me and the world from sin, the highest level of power, which was restraint. You can picture Jesus' power then as the mighty, large body of water that is held back by a dam. Jesus, in order to save you, in order to help us escape death and hell, allowed himself to be falsely accused, to be arrested, beaten, to be nailed to a cross. He held back his power. At any moment, he could have had the people that were against him disappear as if they had never existed. That's his power as God. At any moment, he could have simply changed their minds and changed their hearts. At any moment, he could have just teleported back to heaven and been like, I'm done with this. At any moment. But he did not. He restrained his power and said, take me. Take me because this, this will help my people. This will help the world. This will save and deliver the world from sin and death. This is what all people need. When the world was crying out for help, not sure where it would come from, Jesus came and he was the help we needed. Paul knew what the people in Macedonia needed. After he gets the vision, immediately we read in our Old Testament reading from Acts chapter 16, after Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Jesus' forgiveness from sins is the gospel. The gospel is what he went to Macedonia to help the people with. Now, before we are reminded that the gospel helps us in all situations, it's important to remember that God himself has also provided us with specific individuals to help us with specific needs. For example, when you are sick, God has provided doctors and nurses to help you. God has provided parents to raise up the next generation. God has provided teachers to educate. He has provided pastors to tell people about Jesus. He has provided the police to keep us safe. And for all of those, we thank God for allowing those to exist. And at no moment would we tell somebody to avoid pastors or the police or teachers or doctors because God has put them there to help us with specific things. We don't people tell people, well, just wait for God to miraculously appear to set a broken bone or to pack the lunches in your backpack so you're ready for school or just wait so God miraculously will appear to arrest criminals. God has provided people to do that for us and we give thanks for them and we ought to support them and help them to do the best that they can in those positions. Again, God ultimately has provided all of those things and we give him thanks. So back to the gospel that helps us in every situation. The gospel that is the universal help for all people. When Paul arrived in Macedonia, we hear a couple of accounts of the different people that he helped that had totally different situations, and yet, with each person, Paul helped them with the gospel. First, we hear one of those listening while Paul was preaching, was a woman from the city of Thyatira named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth. She was a worshiper of God, and the Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. Again, notice God is the one that opened her heart to respond. She did not choose to follow God. So the Lord opened her heart, and then when she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us to her home. Paul arrives in Macedonia. He finds this woman, a single woman. We're not told why she's single. We don't know if she's a widower, if she's divorced. We just never hear anything about a husband. And she's living in a different city than the one that she was born in. Again, don't know the circumstances, but this was not her hometown. And yet, Paul went to her. And Lydia and her household was baptized and brought to faith in Jesus by the power of God. God helped her to see that God's love, even though she may have had a different 
family situation, a different looking family, didn't matter. God still loved her and saved her and her household. Following that, we hear about a demon-possessed girl. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. And she kept this up for many days. And finally, Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the Spirit, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. Now, Paul was not annoyed with the girl. He was annoyed with the evil spirit. Because the evil spirit was announcing the correct thing, that Paul was there to teach people about Jesus. But, in case you didn't catch it, it's not good when you have demons telling this message because demons are bad. Paul said, leave. I'm here to preach this message. I'm here as a believer, as a child of God, to preach this message. And for Paul said, leave. At that moment, the spirit left her. So this young woman who was both spiritually and physically enslaved, enslaved by a demon and enslaved by her masters who were simply using her fortune-telling abilities to make money, Paul went to this girl who society deemed an outcast, who society cared nothing for, who society simply saw as a tool. But Paul went to her as a human being, as an immortal soul that needed to hear God's grace and forgiveness. And this girl was changed forever, <coughs> freed from the demon, told about God's love and forgiveness. But then we read, when her owners realized that her hope, their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas, dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. So Paul and Silas get thrown into prison because they helped this woman. <coughs> but while they're there, God sends an earthquake in the middle of the night an earthquake so powerful it shakes the prison doors open and loosens their chains. And the chains and doors of everybody else in the prison, but no one leaves. No one leaves. Prisoners stayed. Which, of course, astonished the prison guard, the jailer. And so we read, he called for lights, rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. And at that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately, he and all his household were baptized. Paul and Silas did not fight being put into prison. They didn't call upon their rights so that they would not have had to face prison bars. And so they went willingly because they had shared the gospel to prison. And we hear what they were doing while they were in prison. They were praying and singing hymns to God. They preached the good news from prison so that their fellow prisoners could hear, so that the jailer, the guy who put them in prison for telling people about Jesus, could hear the good news. And then when that man came running to their feet, they didn't kick him in the face and say, we're out of here. They told him about Jesus. They shared the word of God with him and his whole household. And they were all baptized. These are just a few of the accounts that we get of Paul's gospel work in Macedonia. Totally different situations. These three different people. Lydia, the demon-possessed girl, the jailer. Totally different. All of them clearly needed help. And Paul recognized the help that all of them needed was help from sin was to hear the gospel, the good news of Jesus' forgiveness and God's love. That heaven and the glory of Jesus was theirs. And this gospel then has helped you too. Jesus has saved each of you from your individual sins. He has washed you clean through baptism. Finished, done, washed clean. You have been given the gift of faith by the power of the Holy Spirit, God living inside of you, working through the Word of God, so that you are sure and confident of your forgiveness, that you are free from sin, ultimately free from this broken world, free from evil, that you will share in Jesus' glory. You will live with Him in heaven forever. When you are crying for help then, 
Remember to give thanks to God for those specific individuals that help you with situations. When you are crying for help, in any situation, always, always thank God for the forgiveness that you have. If you are still crying out, in whatever situation that you're in, you feel there is no help, let me be like Paul. Tell me. Reach out to me. My phone number is on the front of the bulletin. That's my cell phone number. My cell phone's sitting right there. I drive the silver Ford. It's parked over there. This is where I work. Please come to me so that I can help you by sharing Jesus with you. And if you have people in your life that need help, help them. In our New Testament reading from Romans 15, Paul wrote, I myself am convinced, my brothers and sisters, as he wrote to a group just like you, brothers and sisters, believers in Christ, he said, I am convinced that you yourselves are full of goodness, filled with knowledge, and competent to instruct one another. You can help others. You can share the gospel with others. You can tell others of the love of God and the forgiveness through Jesus. It's literally what you believe in. I, like Paul, am convinced that you are able to do this, that you are equipped to do it, and that your church continues to work to equip you. You are being equipped by the Word of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, when you are here in worship, when you are watching live at home, or even when you go back and watch this. You are equipped when you are here in Bible study. You are equipped by spending personal time in your own Bible, reading it, your personal time in devotions, by taking one of the meditations in here, a daily one-pager, and the verses, the verses that are used for these devotions are the ones that we use for our readings every Sunday, so it all flows together. Or by taking one of the Ford in Christ's home, the monthly magazine, all those devotions, all those encouragements for you. Or by accessing all the resources that we provide for you as a church online. All the devotions and materials. Or take your bulletin home. It's filled with the Word of God. It's filled with hymns that you can sing. If you're not a great singer, sing in your head. You can use them as prayers. You can use the prayers in there. There are at least three different Bible reading plans that are given to you in your bulletin. Take it. It's yours. It's meant for you. And you get a personal pastor who knows you, your name, that you can come to any time asking for help, who will direct you to the Word of God, trusting that is the powerful source to help you. And we have the personal member ministry program where we take every individual of our congregation into Scripture to see how God has uniquely shaped you to serve others in your home, with your friends, with your family, at work, or at school, in your community, and yes, amongst one another as a congregation. Help us. Help us. Words that are so powerful. Powerful this weekend. They evoke even tears in our eyes as we think of all those people that serve to keep our country safe, to protect us and our freedoms. Words that are powerful as we think of those who lost their lives in Uvalde, in Buffalo, in the Ukraine, and other tragedies, even those close to home. Those words, God hears them. He hears your cry for help, even if they're not the actual words, help us. Even if you don't realize it is God's help that you need, He hears, and He has helped you. Forgiveness, His unchanging love, Eternal life, forever peace is yours through your Savior, Jesus. And you have this great purpose then as his people in this world to help others with that message of Jesus. Help us. God has. He is and he will always through Jesus. Amen. service will continue on page 12. We will join to sing the words of We Believe. These are words of the Apostles' Creed set to music. 
If it's unfamiliar to you, as it becomes familiar, I invite you to join in in singing. So we'll join to sing, We Believe. Continue with the prayer of the church on page 13. Almighty God, you have shown your glory to all nations in Jesus Christ. Guide the work of the church. Help it to persevere in faith, proclaim your word, and bring salvation to people everywhere. Holy Spirit, you guide the church and make her holy. Strengthen and uphold all who serve you and your people. Keep them in health and safety for the good of the church. Help each of us to do faithfully the work to which you have called us. Lord, enable those who do not believe in Christ to put their hope in the gospel. Help us, your church, to grow in love for you and for one another, so that we become more perfect witnesses of your love for all people. Heavenly Father, graciously direct those who have been set in positions of authority among us, people everywhere, that they may enjoy justice, peace, freedom, and a share in the goodness of your creation. 
Lord God, you give, a, you give strength to the weary and new courage to those who have lost heart. We ask that you would heal the sick, comfort the dying, give safety to travelers, and free those unjustly deprived of liberty. In your mercy, hear the prayers of all who call on you in any trouble, that they may have the joy of receiving your help in their need. We especially pray for all those families and friends, the community affected by that mass shooting in Uvalde. Again, this Memorial Day, we give you thanks for those in the armed forces who gave their lives to preserve our freedoms, continue to be with their families, continue to bless our country with those willing to protect their fellow countrymen, even if it does mean paying the ultimate price. Be with those battling health issues, Joseph Long, Michelle Sholock's father, who is in hospice, Teresa Patterson's cousin, who is in suffering, Diana, Melissa Hammerquist's granddaughter, also be with Melissa's son and daughter-in-law and her daughter-in-law's mother, with Sandy Gross with a fractured back, Benj Gum and his recovery from brain surgery, Guy Bender recovering from the virus, with Bubba, Trace Ivy's uncle, Beverly, the friend of Shannon Norton in hospice, Pam, Jeannie Petrakowski's daughter-in-law, uh, daughter-in-law's mother, a healthy pregnancy for healthy Trimbeck, keep mother and child healthy, be with all those battling cancer, Dennis Gross, that's Dan's father, Mauricio Pargas, Tony's brother, Muriel, Pastor Herring's aunt, Mary, Alyssa Ivey's mother, Samantha Hall, a friend of the Ivies, Beverly Harp, a friend of the Ivies, Karen, Jeannie Petrakowski's sister, Ken Connor, Rhody Lynn, and Lynn, a friend of Cindy Fry. We continue to pray for all those suffering from the war in Ukraine, be with the Russian people, and all those affected by war throughout the world. Be with our teachers, kids in school. Uh, we pray that you would bless Grant Ritter and Hannah Schneider, who are getting married this afternoon. And pray that you would be with all those who are married. And we give you thanks for Caleb Salofa, who recently graduated with his master's in education. And now hear us as we bring you our private prayers. Lord, help us and hear us. Now as we pray together, and we'll pray slowly so the children can join with us, we'll pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. As we join to sing the closing hymn, Again, in stanza one, third line down, that I myself was helpless. Again, that reminder that God is our great helper. And we hear that call then to go share that Jesus is the help of all people. So we'll join to sing the closing hymn, hymn 560, I Hear the Savior Calling. <laughs> 